Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. A few weeks ago we went deep into the backstory of Varaxis, the king of Karak, and because of that I wanted to create a fun deck that centers around his cool ability. An ability that is rather unique in comparison to the other evolution cards. We'll talk about that in a minute. Today's deck is called Booster Pack and contrasts with the last deck we talked about in that we fully focus on boosting our own units and keeping that point gain going in multiple ways with a few select heavy hitters to take out key threats. As always, you can view the deck composition right here in the video and a link to the Play Gwent website is also available in the description down below if you want to check that out separately. Let's take a closer look at what makes this deck tick. True Master Mirror, Northern Realms got some really good supporting engine cards that can supplement an already great set of cards. Since this deck focuses on boosting, it makes sense that a lot of the engine cards in this deck do just that, either boost themselves or other units. The new Karak City Guard does just that, as long as you don't use her order ability with which they can move a unit to the other row, she'll boost herself to one at the end of every turn. Probably earning her paycheck at the gates, I suppose. The Temerian Drummers are more tactical, they boost the unit on their right side by one at the end of each turn. This way you can boost whatever you want and build up stronger units as you go. The new Eggman card does the same thing with a slightly higher base power as long as you don't use his 3 damage order ability. Anna Strenger is even stronger since she can boost both her adjacent allies if she is boosted herself, so on Inspired. Put her to the right of Eggman or a drummer and she'll boost them immediately since abilities are resolved from left to right, so the drummer will boost Anna and then Anna will boost both the drummer and the unit on the right side of her. So that's something you'll have to keep in mind. You can supplement these boosts with even more value if you put a Trident Infantry unit next to any of these cards, since he'll deal one random damage for every boost he receives. So that can even double up if you put him in between a drummer and Anna Stranger herself. But in most cases you'll want something to boost before playing any of these cards. The Karak City guards can fulfill that role, but they might become a too juicy target that way. Uh, and instead I like to start with a Karak Frigate instead. On order, this ship spawns a 2 power volunteer on its right side. And if it's surrounded by soldiers on both sides of the end of your turn, you'll gain another volunteer after that, so the order ability is reset. It's not an automatic ability, but it still gives you 2 points per turn until your row is filled or of course the frigate is destroyed. In the first round I like to pull one of these with Amphibious Assault, the new Echo card for Northern Realms, which allows you to pull a 9 provision card or lower from your deck and boost it by the amount of provisions under 9 it has. In case of the frigate, which has a provision cost of 6 for example, this means it gets boosted to a nice 7 power along with its 1 armor it already has. Solid enough to not be taken out quickly. If you don't have Amphibious Assault however, you can easily pull it with John Natalis. So either of these cards will work. After that you can start boosting and if you have both cards, Natalis can also be used to pull either of the Boiling Oil cards in this deck, allowing you to deal 5 damage and allowing you also to use Natalis in case you already have Amphibious Assault, so he never goes to waste. After that you can just start boosting, as we said. The second and third rounds is where the big combos come in, of course. The two biggest setup cards we haven't talked about yet are Reynard Odo from Thronebreaker and Varaxis himself. Reynard boosts his adjacent units when played and boosts any other unit you play after him, with him still on the board, by one as well. Varaxis, in his final form, so the king form, has a similar passive ability that only applies to soldiers, which matches most units in this deck. Both are therefore the most effective if you play them early. But the other ability on Varaxis should be used carefully, since he can reset a unit's order ability, allowing them to use it again. There are three big targets for this ability. But since we're talking about order abilities, you'll need at least one turn to set this combo up. Very important to keep in mind. Prince Ancius is your big attacker, he deals 4 damage or duels an enemy instead if he is boosted, allowing you to take out bigger units depending on how high his power is. 
It's an order ability, so you can use it twice, and he has formation, meaning you can pull this off immediately and once more if Varaxis is already on the board. So you can do that twice in the same turn if Varaxis is already on the board. The same applies to the Bloody Baron. He can reset an enemy unit, which can be devastating against big boosters, such as a Mere Northern Realms deck or a big Monsters deck. Being able to do this twice in a row has its obvious benefits. And last but not least, we have the War Elephant. Its base order ability allows you to damage its adjacent units by 4 and boost itself by 4 for each unit that it hit. This, however, changed in Master Mirror, allowing you to boost it by a flat 8 points if it is surrounded by a soldiers without any caveats. It does not have formation, however, so you'll have to wait a turn to pull this off. You can use this to your advantage, however, to set up the soldiers around it in your next turn. Remember that the Sightman you spawn with your leader ability is also a soldier, so he counts, and with Varaxis you can even do this twice, often making this the better combo, but only in case you have the final say in a match. You'll boost the Elephant to a whopping 24 points, or 25 if Reynard is on the field, so your opponent could take it out with a tall removal card like Geralt or Champion's Charge, if they have final say. But if you have final say, this is one hell of a climax. Since Varaxis himself has formation 2, you can even keep the Elephant and Varaxis as your final cards, play the Elephant first, and then play Varaxis on the melee row to double dip on the Elephant's abilities, with less risk. In the extreme case where you don't have any of these three cards to use Varaxis on, you can either use him on Radovid's Royal Guards, or the Karak Marines for an extra 2 or 4 points, depending on your setup. It's not much, but it has saved me from a loss before. So that's the basic flow of the deck to get you uh, introduced to the basic concept, but let's take a look at an example match. I've chosen another mirror match here, so we're facing a similar Northern Realms deck. Mirrors are great examples to use since you have access to the same tools as your opponent, so it shows you how important timing and combos are. You'll see me play a slightly altered version of this deck than I put in the description down below. Originally I had a Redanian Knight and two Sightmen, but I replaced one of those and the Knight with two Karak Marines, since that made more sense in this deck and gives you another way of getting more value out of Varaxis in a pinch. Mulligan-wise, you should aim for some of the side boosters and at least Amphibious Assault or Natalis. I sadly get neither of these in the first round here, which puts me in a bit of a disadvantage, especially in a melee match like this. Our first hand is actually all out terrible, so we'll have to make do with what we have. The first few turns we take a slightly different approach than our opponent. We both start with Radovid's Guards, a good starting point that gives your next unit a small buff, but our opponent plays a frigate true amphibious assault, as we suggested earlier in the video, and we go with a Karak City Guard to start automatically generating points. True amphibious assault, our opponent clearly has an advantage here. So I'm just trying to bleed some cards from my opponent, I am definitely not expecting to win this first round. As the volunteer starts coming in from the opposite side, we play Anna Stranger in an attempt to have a stronger point gain every turn by boosting her immediately with Radovid's guards, giving us 3 points every turn automatically. Alas, our beautiful Karak city guard is taken out by a boiling oil, which costs us an extra point every turn. To replace the guards, we put down a Tridem infantry unit, which basically restores our 3 point loop every turn, since he'll damage an enemy every time Anna boosts him. Our opponent basically does the same thing, by placing a drummer next to their infantry unit that was already on the field. Again, I am stalling here. If my opponent would pass, the elephant can still bridge the gap if absolutely necessary, so we still have kind of a chance, but I'm not expecting to win this round. We take out the drummer with the boiling oil next, but two more marines from our opponent cause us too big of a gap, so we pass to make sure we don't go into the final round with one less card. We're a bit luckier with our next mulligans, we get both Prince Anseus and Varaxis, and our opponent passes so we just put down a frigate and be done with it. Round 3 is even more generous, giving us Amphibious Assault, which we're, we've been waiting for a long time for, Bloody Baron, and John Natalis, which is kind of useless right now, but we can still pull that last boiling oil with that one. 
Setup is really important here, so once again we start with Radovid's Guards and a drummer right next to that, which we boost immediately with Radovid's Guards ability. Our opponent uses Amphibious Assault again to play a juicy Karak City Guard, something we'll be able to deal with through the Bloody Baron. Then I decide to do something admittedly a bit risky. I play Varaxis first. I should have probably used Amphibious Assault to spawn Reynard first, but both of these cards give you so much value by just being on the board that you can take the risk if your opponent doesn't have any big removal options. Which our opponent shouldn't really have, aside from maybe Bloody Baron and Prince Ancius, so the same options we have. An enemy frigate comes up next and we play Reynard after that. This setup means that every unit we play is automatically boosted by one or two, depending on whether it's a soldier or not. The drummer gives us another point every turn on top of that, so this is a pretty nice setup if I can say so myself. Our opponent plays their Anna, giving them a nice loop, but they only boost her once, which allows our Natalis to pull that last boiling oil to take out Anna in one go. Focusing on your opponent's strongest engines is key, since you don't have too many removal options. Philippa comes in next, dealing high damage but not killing anything of importance on our side. And Prince Ancius is next on our end, so we use him to take out the frigate. I also use our leader ability once to boost Phyraxis to 6, since he was damaged to 5 power, which is of course dangerous if our opponent still has a boiling oil in their hand, so he's not in range to be taking out. We need to take a look at our hand at the moment, because it's important to how you play out your final cards. Both the Elephant and Visigurd have an order ability and don't have formation, so they can't be lost or we can't use that ability at all. The Bloody Baron has formation, so can be triggered immediately, so obviously we need to keep him as our last card. Visigurd gets charges based on the amount of boosted allies, so we'll keep him as the second to last card, meaning the Elephant goes up next. Our opponent clearly lost a lot of good cards early, because we're only getting lower level bronzes as their next cards. We drain our leader ability to boost as many allies as possible to maximize the Scytheman's power which goes up to 11, after which we play Visigurd for 7 points and 8 charges of damage. We also trigger the Elephant, which makes this a 27 point turn in one go. If you also count Visigurd's charges, we actually gain 35 points in one turn. But we're not done yet. We also use Varaxis to re-enable Anseus and use him to take out the Rat of its guards, technically also taking out 6 points. We don't use Varaxis on the Elephant, since our opponent could still have the Bloody Baron, taking all those points away from us. It's not looking good for our opponent though. They play their Varaxis and drain their leader ability for a 10 power Sightman, but it's far from enough. We play our Bloody Baron to reset the Karak City Guard and use Visigurd's charges to take out Varaxis, which in turn pushes our opponent to forfeit. We take the win in a pretty solid mirror match. To fully benefit from this deck you need to do some setup, but because of the boosts you can do this in a safe way. It still struggles against heavy, heavy removal like Skalliger, but holds its ground against basically anything else. Don't overplay in the first round and just set up some boosting loops and you can take the final rounds with your big combos involving Anseus, the Bloody Baron, the War Elephant and of course Varaxis himself. I'm glad I was able to fit in another deck guide before the end of the season. I just got married, so life has been really, really busy these past few weeks. Thank you for the patience. I should be able to produce more videos over the coming weeks on a variety of different topics, war, deck guides, and more. And that's it for today. What do you think about the booster pack deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice or any feedback in the comment section down below. So we can help each other out, because that's what we're here for after all. If you're waiting for more, I have several more deck guides, such as the Cult of Siri deck from last time, and the Syndicate Priest deck. And if you're looking for something different, I also have you covered. You can check out my Art Secrets in Gwent videos, or my analysis videos on the expansions or the journey systems. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. As always, check me out on Twitter at atrophynut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support, again, is greatly appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next 
episode of Gruntage. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Okay. That's one for the blooper reel. Okay. It's okay. Are we going to do the recording like this? That's gonna be bad, is it? <laughs>